Hey, everybody, welcome to the Rock Life Podcast. This is our Sermon Rewind. Uh, man, we are getting so excited. These have been so much fun going into really rewinding the messages and delving into a little bit more in depth to what we're, whatever the topic is of the week. And in this Your World series, we have covered all the bases of what pertains to our life and what God and his scripture says about it. My name is Antonio, and uh, we are here Again, a ministry of the Rock Church and Word Outreach Center. We appreciate you tuning in. I want to encourage you to subscribe, share, like, tell somebody, spread the word. Hey, post it on social media. We'll repost you uh, that you're watching. Again, we just want to get the word out because we believe this is a great tool, a great supplemental resource on top of coming to the weekend messages that are going to help build your life, uh, add to you, add value to you because we're going to discuss, again, scripture as and practical applications for living out our life because God cares about those things. So welcome. I have Pastor Dan here with me this morning. Hey, everybody. Uh, and before we get into our topic, Pastor, you know, I I find myself, I can be a content junkie uh, where <laughs> <laughs> and that that's I just coined that term. But, uh, you know, junkie. whether it's through social media or reading podcasts, uh, and, and my wife, Angelina, doesn't let me get away with saying I read because I do Audible. Oh. And so she gets mad when I say uh, I was reading the other day. Right? Like I was yeah. reading the other day. But it's like, oh, I was listening. You know, but anyways. That's a technicality. Yeah, you know, I, I think so. I mean, because I've knocked out some books. <clears throat> I'm un- undiagnosed ADHD, and I feel like I couldn't sit and read a book. It'd be very difficult for me. Wow. So. Anyways, so but what I was thinking was what what's something that maybe you've read, listened to, heard, seen recently that really – you know, um, as far as recently, yeah. uh, I, I really haven't had a lot of time to dive into anything, um, you know, that deep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's There's been stuff that I've scratched the surface on here and there, um, yeah. but a lot of my mental focus goes towards um, my study time. Yeah. And so as far as reading, and uh, especially reading, because yeah. I read so heavily yeah. for the messages when I get out of the office. Yeah. And uh, even even when I study from home, um, you know, I don't want. Nothing. That's not recharging of any sort. No, no, no. I don't. I, I mean, there's days I drive home. I don't even listen to music. Mm. I'm just like quiet. Yeah. You know, so um, I get a lot out of that. And uh, I think I've said this before for me to recharge and refresh. A lot of times I need a horizon. So I'll take a walk. Yeah. Things like that. I don't read to refresh. I, yeah. You know, when I read for leisure. Yeah. When I have time to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, I do read. uh Different things, you know, here and there. Um, I love fiction and things like that. So um, I, I have it in mind to read like Tolkien's, you know, Lord oh, of the yeah. Rings series. I, yeah. I'd like to yeah. do that someday because I've read all the C.S. Lewis stuff, the Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah. We read those to the kids when they were little. I read the Space Trilogy, okay, which is hard to read. Yeah, I don't know if you ever have you ever tried I ha- that one. I have not. I don't even to be honest. I don't. I mean, if you're watching, you probably see my face went like this. I, I would, don't know what the I would space love to is. see in the comments <laughs> if anybody's read the Space Trilogy and uh, if you had were those trouble. movies. If anyone's thinking no. like I or did they do no, 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 they okay. didn't make a movie out of it. They they should, but I think it'd be crazy if they did because yeah. some of the visuals and things like that. But um, the beginning of those books, I think like especially the first two books, the first couple chapters are just like arduous. You mm. know, you're like, what is going on? <clears throat> is it like dry? Is it heady? What it's yeah okay. i mean it's just like w- what's happening here yeah. i mean he's describing like england there's a dude oh, okay and then he gets into something that looks like a coffin and then eventually he flies to outer space and then all of a sudden the book's like amazing you know so you got to push through though you got oh push yeah first couple, yeah okay. first couple chapters it's just like what on earth am i reading and why yeah. am i doing this yeah. you know i'd rather like you know grind my teeth down or something i don't know so um yeah but i mean once you get into the book and then all of a sudden you start to see the biblical illusions and things like yeah. that it's like whoa you know yeah so um and then especially the third book when he starts getting into some of the stuff it, it can seem crazy because like uh, merlin shows up and is like king arthur and, uh, you know okay. all that kind of yeah, stuff and yeah, it's just yeah. like what what's happening but um but yeah, I mean, like a uh, he prophesies about a bear, and you know the bear is going to do something very noble. So this is called the the space space o- trilogy. Space trilogy. The space trilogy. And I think there's it's three called, of them. There's three of them. Yeah, the first one I think was Out of the Silent Planet, then Perilandra, or maybe Perilandra, then Out of the Silent Planet. I might Planet. have to check on Audible. <laughs> well, yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> the I wonder the voice. Sometimes the voice does it. First hour or so yeah. might be pretty dry. You might be, what's going on? Why well, am I it reminds me of the kid. Uh, do you remember The Princess Bride? You remember yes. The, the, yes. the grandson's like, this is boring, Grandpa. and Because uh-huh. you know, it's just like setting the story, setting yeah. it up, you know, but then it gets all into it. So. Although the guy that was reading it, I, I remember him as Columbo. Because oh, yeah. I don't know his <laughs> name. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, back yeah. in the day, yeah, he was yeah. on the television show. But I, I would like to hear him read a book. That's true. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, he like, does have a good voice for that. That's <laughs> true. I can, I can hear that. So in recent times, though, I did read uh, a lot of Aaron Mat- Eric Metaxas's stuff. Yes, I remember you gave that to us. You gave that to us as a Christmas gift. One yeah, day. yeah, yeah. The women and men. Seven. Seven men. Seven men and, and seven, seven women. Seven women, and then he wrote seven more men. I need to check and see if he wrote seven more women because I think oh, he was writing that. Yeah. But I really enjoy because it's almost um, short story form of overviews of people's lives right. that were great, and right. he talks about the secret of their greatness, and so it really impacted me because. Some of these guys I really have a lot of respect for, mm-hmm. but then to see the overview of their life, yeah. um, it was just amazing. And mm-hmm. then there were some people that I didn't know that I was delighted to cool. kind of learn more about their lives. Because autobiography style, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Is he a historian? Is that what? So I guess he got into it because when they made the uh, Amazing Grace, mm-hmm. that if you remember the whole movie and all yeah. that kind of stuff, and then William Wilberforce, and then he was doing a biography there, and then... Um, you know, he ended up doing Dietrich Bonhoeffer and that was like, yeah, for those of you watching on the, <laughs> <laughs> on the actual video, yeah. uh, that, that thick of a book, like 450 pages. So wow. for those of you just listening, you can yeah. imagine the size of that. But, um, I read it all. I, yeah. I read Bonhoeffer and it was just, I, World War II fascinates me. Yes. So I do watch a lot of those yeah. movies, yeah, you know, yeah. and, uh, and I, and I do dive into a lot of that. So yeah, when I am watching stuff, when I'm learning about things, um, I'm, I'm really interested in that area. So like even on the seven men and seven women, he uh, he takes actually a man and a woman from Russia during the Bolshevik Revolution and, um, you know, the communist uprising, all that kind of stuff and, and talks about their specific paths. And that was fascinating because I've heard a lot of the Germany side, right. you know, and what yeah, happened yeah, there, yeah. but I hadn't heard a lot of the Russia, you know, with the uh, revolution and things like that. Right. And, you know, they killed 10 million people in that. Right. Which is you're right. Wild. And that's still devastating. I mean, till this day, there, yeah. I mean, the population and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. That, stuff. See that I, those those rabbit trails of history are really fun. Yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. That's fun. Well, I mean, kind of an awkward segue. There was no real smooth <laughs> segue. I just I did want to. I just nothing to do. With I was what just we're curious because I, I again, I, I tend to always have something in my ear. Uh, but I, I like you every once in a while because I always, it's like I need to. Just be quiet sometimes because yeah. there's so many voices. Well, here's a good segue. Pastor Dan, what are you reading for this series? Oh, yes. Cause, oh, yes. Because I am. In in study. You did t- okay, study. When, you, when you are studying. So I have a stack of books on my de- desk yeah. right now okay. in, here in the office. And uh, every year when I've taught this, and I, I haven't done it every year in the past maybe four years or something like that, um, and, I, and it was kind of sparse in between, Um but we used to do this literally every year. Yeah. And I probably will start that again just because it's so healthy for the yeah. church. It's yeah. healthy for all of us. It's a healthy reminder and a refresher. And then for the new people coming in, it's healthy to be taught, you know. Right. <clears throat> and, um, and, and, and it helps to, you know, build the people's lives as well as helps to build the ministry. It takes money to live. It takes money to, yeah. to do yeah. ministry. And so um, I've got a stack of books that I've used over the years that uh, – that have helped me, and, and it seems like each each time I do it, I'll take one book and just use that. So this time I'm doing it differently in the sense that I'm taking more of a biblical story out of First Kings 17, the yeah. story of Elijah, when he shows up in the three different um, stories from his life back to back to back, that, uh, that God was showing me some things about generosity, the tithe, and stewardship, yeah. um, you know, which... which uh, which will lead us into the birthday celebration as we come forward. So in the past, I've used things like um, Robert Morris's The Blessed Life. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Right. Um, that is a good book. And then he had a follow-up one. Uh, I read The Blessed Church. That was great. Um, but he had a follow-up one on stewardship. Okay. Um, I know there was the Beyond Blessed. He did like Beyond a blessed. Beyond. Yeah. Okay, Beyond. Yeah. Okay. And so I, I thank yeah. you because I forgot the name. Yeah, so yeah. I was trying yeah. to <laughs> like remember it. But yeah, but yeah you brought it out. Um, and so I did use that one year fantastic Mm -hmm. um there's one called i think it's called money wealth and possessions two guys from canada oh and um they hey hey i just i said said, hey yeah (laughs) 
I, I won't tell the <laughs> joke that's in my head right now, but um, you know. <laughs> we love our Canadian brothers and we sisters. We love our Canadian brothers. They picked the name. I'll <laughs> tell the joke. They picked the name because they were having a lottery to see what they would do it. And yeah. So they picked random letters, and so we've got a C, A, <laughs> N, A, D, A. You've never heard that? <laughs> <laughs> that is joke, but yeah i don't know <laughs> because i can i can I, I you know i recently listened to a podcast for the guy from minnesota and oh, actually i was yeah. born in minnesota you were and so yeah and so when i but it's like very distinct you, you know, and so adam are, are CFO yeah over yeah here, man. i only lived there for four years and actually i've never been back california or bust and you know like four, four years old we left i've and been to the uh the airport Oh yeah, Saint, that's about uh, Saint Paul. Say that's about as far as I've gotten into Minnesota, but it was a nice airport. Yeah, yeah. I, I was born in Minneapolis. My brother okay. was born in Saint Paul, Twin Cities. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And then we came, and I I've never been back. My parents went back. Okay. Um, but I've I've never been. It's the Lando Lakes. Yeah, Lando Ten Thousand Lakes. <laughs> but anyways, that was we got distracted. Oh, but Pastor Dan, that actually, it actually reminds me reminds me of a question because you're we're talking about the books that you're yeah. reading. And, um, you know, I, just to kind of give you guys, the listeners or viewers over the next, we, we are in our finance series. Yeah. Uh, and over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about finances. Now, as part of your world, we've done many series within these. We've done parenting. We've done marrieds. We've spent some time on these individual topics. And so obviously we are setting aside time to discuss finances. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's really cool, though. You know, I think YouTube is the second or third largest now um, search engine, right? Because you think oh. of Google or you yeah, think Google. of other web browsers, but YouTube has become a search engine. I'm sure. And uh, when I looked up, you know, you just type in what does God say? And then these things oh, yeah. come up. But what does God say about money was the seventh one. Oh, wow. Tattoos actually was. Like the two, top two or three, which we'll have to have another conversation about that. So there was, what does God say about money? And then what does the Bible say? Again, it came up number seven okay. as well. Um, so people are wondering and have this question, what does God say about money? Or, you know, I didn't type in stewardship or some of these maybe Christianese language well, that yeah. we would, you know, because, you know, when I um, hit enter, you know, business came up or these kind of sure. different other things talked about it. Um, but a question why talk about it in church? Well, it's a big part of our lives. Right. You know, we work 40 hours a week mm -hmm. to attain the wealth, right. to be able to live, sustain our lives, and to, you know, store up or, or have some sort of recreation or entertainment. Um, you know, there's a lot that we, we use this mm -hmm. with. Yeah. As well, it's a massive stronghold. Yeah. Uh, there are people who are bound by either fear. That right there. Yep. Or excess. Yep. Um, you know, and if we're going to work to receive those things, even even things like retirement, you know, these are weights that people carry. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and definitely as the financial realm and the economy changes and shifts, there are specific fears and, and trials that believers are going to go through. Mm -hmm. And if we don't teach people about that, they're out there on their own trying to make decisions. Yeah. Rather than turning to God's word. And finding what God has to say about those things. And, and that's where error could come in. Yeah. In, in other words, things like hoarding, uh, you know, where people are stingy, they're not generous. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's, that's one of the errors that could happen. Uh, the, the other error is just like, I think we said this in the message, just renouncing wealth altogether and, right. and, and living in poverty because they, people think that that's more spiritual than yeah. having money. Yeah. Um, th the Bible never says that having money is any more or less spiritual. Right. Uh, that that's that's a different you know thought process altogether. What's more or less spiritual? Mm -hmm. uh, what you have and don't have doesn't determine. That's why the body is more than clothing, yes. right? And, yeah. and the the body is more than food, right? Um, so our life is much bigger than those things, and our spiritual life is bigger than things. Yes, you know uh, those things are all going to burn. However, God brings them into our lives to steward, and so we need to know how to properly steward them, and God has a lot to say about our stewardship because we're stewarding our lives. All right. And I think that's what the Your World series has been is the stewardship of every aspect of our lives. I mean, yeah. we even talked about our health. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a stewardship. How, yeah. how are we going to handle the temple of God that he's given to us, our bodies? So with our wealth, with our provision, with finances, with all the things, how do we steward those things? If we're out there on our own, like I said, we're going to make the wrong decisions. Yep. 
um, or or at the very least poor decisions. Yeah. You know, we might get by, we might be able to make it, but we might not uh, be able to live in the fullness that God has for us, mm -hmm. as well as unlocking the spiritual principles that are contained in God's Word that we're going to discuss as we go through this series. Yeah. Uh, especially, I would say, uh, the second week and the fourth week, Yeah. Um, we're going to hit those spiritual principles that are unlocked in yeah. our stewardship, and then the third week we'll hit stewardship hard. Yeah. Well, and, and I'd like to, especially on, on this uh, venue, on, on this platform with, with our Sermon Rewinds, uh, to be able to dedicate one of, because I know we're going to be on this topic for a few weeks, but maybe one of the weeks we'll just have some of the questions. Maybe yeah. So I want to encourage you to send love your it. questions, uh, because we'd love to answer some of these things or do our best to point to Scripture to see what God is, going back to the yeah. Google search of what God is saying and what does this look like for our lives, because God does... And again, going back to the loaded question of why are we discussing this in church or why have this as a series? Because God does care about these things the same way that he cares about your marriage and parenting and your health, other things that we've covered in yeah. singleness, other things that we've covered in this series. Um, and, and I think you said, said that so well. We dedicate so much of our waking hours yeah. to our work. Um, and, and what do we get in exchange for that work? Finances. And so I think it's, it's really clear why it should be discussed and I know in future weeks as we talk about now, now that we we've talked about what finances are or what it looks like, what do we do once we have it or what do yeah. we do with it, uh, which that stewardship is so beautiful. Um, so th that's something to look forward to. And I want to encourage you guys to stay tuned. We, we really need your feedback to help with that. Obviously, we'll uh, there's some questions that we are just common questions. And I'm sure we get either at the back door or through emails yeah. and things that come up as yeah. well. That will help that, but we'd love to engage with you guys in that sense. Pastor Dan, you said something in the message this weekend that really, and I, and I told you on Sunday, that really just challenged me, uh, and, and you talked, of, or and it was from the verse, but it talked about n taking a viewpoint or a perspective that is of an unbeliever, hmm. and having, in other words, I don't want to approach my finances as an unbeliever. Right. And that that provoked me and it convicted me. And what what can you dive into that a little bit more? Like what what does that look like and how so how do we approach it as a believer? Sure. Um you know, obviously in order to believe there has to be a foundation for your faith right. and that is the scriptures. Mm -hmm. You know, and so here Jesus is is speaking in the Sermon on the Mount and he's talking about what dominates the thoughts of unbelievers, right? what they're going to wear, what they're going to eat. Yeah. Uh, you know, the book of James talks about, we'll go to this city, do business here and there. But then he turns him back towards God and says, hey, you should be saying if the Lord wills, we'll do mm -hmm, this, right? Mm -hmm. there, there is a will of God in the, in the midst of what our occupation, our business is. And I think that's where the worldly mentality, if, if, we, if we just take a moment and imagine ourselves yeah. without God, right. what would we be doing? Well, we'd be working. Why? Because we have to, we have to live. I have mm -hmm. to eat. I have to put clothes on my kids bodies as they grow yeah as, you know that's going to change over time um you know i've got to put a roof over our heads i've got to have transportation uh you know i've got to store up because eventually the kids are going to move out go to college have weddings there's yeah. things to pay for cars things like that for them as they grow and then eventually they'll get on their out on their own and then i've got a window of time that i'm not pouring into those things and so it's almost like a mad dash to the finish line to try and store up enough mm -hmm. to be able to retire on well with the economy with the way things are going with social security and things like that how much is enough right, right. and i think that's where a lot of times people never close that circle they have an open-ended circle that they've got wealth coming in and they've got wealth going out but they never say this is the amount that i need to live on uh, because they're they're living paycheck to paycheck, yeah. they're yeah. they're living need to need essentially, and as life changes, that need changes, and so they never essentially say, "Hey, this is my target." They've got an open ended thing that they're just trying to build as much as they can and do what they can, and then at the the end, they yep. store up as much as they can until they kick the can, <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. that's uh, that's just kind of the thing that 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 life is all about. So that someday I can retire and do what I want. But then they retire and they don't know what they want to do. They're idle. Then they, they may go work at something. They may tinker at something. Okay, so unbelievers, right? right. We, we've just looked at the thought processes. There's no God in that. Mm -hmm. There's no purpose in that. Right. It's just basic survival. Now, a believer, our basic survival is covered. Right. 
God said he feeds the sparrows, he yeah. clothes the flowers. Yeah. Uh, you know, even Jesus, foxes have holes yeah. and birds have nests. Right. Even though the Son of Man had no place to lay his head, Jesus was doing just fine, wasn't right. he? Yeah. Stayed yeah. at Peter's house, we know that. Uh, we know that it, when he went to Jerusalem, all he had to do to get a, a, a dinner reservation was right. say, hey, go and you'll find a guy with a donkey. And, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, there's a dude with a jar on his you know, shoulder or his head. Yeah. I forget which one it was, but he's walking. Go, <laughs> go to the house where he's going to be at and, yeah. and tell him the master needs this. God has every provision we need. Right. So if we're not concerned with basic needs, okay, even, even in retirement, God will take care of me. Yeah. You know? Now, that doesn't mean I'm unwise and I never steward or save or any of those types of things. But what it does mean is that that pressure that dominates the thoughts of the unbeliever is yeah. off of me. Right. And that doesn't have to dominate my thoughts. So then what should dominate my thoughts? Oh, that's good. Come and on. I think that's where the purpose comes right. in. We, we mentioned it just at the end of the message. Yeah. Right? Right. As a preview for next week. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, the next next couple weeks, actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we... we we hit those things because we want to whet the appetite. Yeah. If the purpose of my wealth mm-hmm. is to establish God's covenant yeah. and to show who he is, that's so good. Then that changes my financial yeah. outlook, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So then when I'm selecting a house, of course I'm going to look for a place that's safe. Mm-hmm. Of course I'm going to look for a place that meets the needs of my family. I've got three kids. Mm-hmm. I need at least four bedrooms. Right, right. Right, things like that, yeah. you know, um, or, or whatever you, you – you, and, then, and then you're going to go to desires. We want a pool. Mm-hmm. We want a view. Right. Uh, you know, we want it on a cul-de-sac right. because we want a big backyard or yeah. we want, you know – uh, out, we want some property because we're yeah. going to plant food or, you know, have animals or things right. like that. So there's, there's different desires and things that are in there. Of course, you're going to think about those things. But with a believer, how can this wealth build kingdom? Come on. You know what I mean? Like, right. the, is the house, uh, uh, Pastors Mario and Michelle, I think, are a great example of this. Mm-hmm. When I first met them, they had us over to their house, and I went out in their backyard. Their backyard, have you been there? I have not. I've seen okay. pictures. <laughs> you seen pictures? Okay. Their backyard, they've got all this concrete. Yeah. And then they got this long awning that goes over the whole of their backyard yeah. with fans and all that kind of stuff. They've yeah. got tables and chairs and yeah. stuff like that. And Pastor Mario, before he's a pastor, he told me, he said, when we bought this house, our desire was to host small group meetings. Mm-hmm. If the children's ministry wanted to bring all their volunteers here. Yeah. You know, we wanted to do stuff to gather people. Yeah. And I just looked at that. I thought, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. And I, I've had the pleasure of going there for different events, mm-hmm. whether it be family events, whether it be, uh, you know, um, different uh, life mark moments of, yep. you know, somebody graduated or things like that. But then also church events where, yeah. you know, I've been able to see that put into use right. and see the children's ministry utilize that. And, you know, it's just been a really neat thing. Right. But their, their mindset was different. I'm buying this property because it has the ability yeah. to host right. people and to bring people together for kingdom purpose. Yeah. You know, that's a different thought about wealth. Right. We, you know, we <laughs> not to be like, whoa, us, but Angelina and I, we, we, when we bought our house, we thought the same thing. We Did had a, a much smaller home and like kind of on our, wish list before god god this is what we're leaving for so we also want a place that we can host people yeah we want a place that we can have people over because that's our heart and the bible talks about being hospitable sure uh and we want to be able to have a place where people could come and get and we've done barbecues we've done yeah uh small group nights and in fact we've had probably a couple of different uh couples get end up getting married they're like oh we met at your uh, small groups at your house really (laughs) yeah and i married one of those couples and so we we've over time, you know, we used to do New Year's parties for the young adults at our house. Cause that, and when we do, and there was a season when we weren't hosting as much. And I went, babe, we remember we told God, if mm-hmm. we if you give us a place yeah, well, that we can fit, then we have to like we have to hold our end of the deal, God, and because that was our heart, God provide this, yeah. this place and not to hoard it for ourselves and my big house so I can spread out and you can be on one end and I can be on. But I I, it, I I see what you're saying because our mindset is it's a different mindset. for your glory. Yeah, it's it's for the kingdom. So even if you have liquidity, right. if you have wealth, if you have uh, assets, right. stocks, or you know different things like that, if you've got inheritances and things, uh, the question is is God, what do you want mm-hmm. from this wealth? Yeah, you know God has no problem with us having wealth. He has a problem with wealth having us. Yeah. Well, I love how you you know that imagery you talked about even Solomon in all his splendor. Now, 
maybe if you know the Bible well, you know King Solomon, who he was and how rich and all. But I think, okay, it was perfect context in that time. Everyone knew about something. But yeah. I think nowadays, Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, you know, you go on social media, it'll show you the homes that they're buying. Right. And it'll show because, you know, they're the real estate pictures are public or whatever. And you see the sprawling, their, their mansions and their cars. And so imagine, you know, Jeff Bezos in all his splendor. Yeah. And we can see their homes, multiple homes on different islands all over the globe. Yeah. And yet in personal, in, in modern day context, God does more and God provides better. Sure. So like, Oh man, that picture I can take, you know, Solomon, I know who he was and the, but even though he was the richest man ever, and you think so, oh, w- richer than Zuckerberg, richer than Z- yeah. But yeah. but for our to capture that imagery mm-hmm. of God can provide even better than what we could imagine these billionaires yeah. can do. Well, you think about it. There's probably uninhabited islands all over right. the world, right? right, in the oceans and things like that, that the birds live on. They've got their own <laughs> private right. islands that are billion dollar islands. <laughs> You know, there's places that are on the earth that you can only get to if you hike in and spend the night somewhere, right. you know, and uh, and not many people see those things, mm-hmm. but the birds see them mm-hmm. every day, anytime they want. Right. You know, if God's providing that for birds, right, that's how so much good. more will he provide for us? Yeah. Right. And so we don't have to worry. I think that's the biggest thing is that, you know, the biggest takeaway, if you will, I was trying to express and hopefully people got a hold of it is that with God as your provider, you don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. And that means that anything that that starts to be asked in stewardship is not a worry. Right. It's not a pressure. It's not a care. It's a joy because there's purpose in it. I'm I'm establishing God's covenant with this wealth. So if God asked me to give, if God asked me to bless, if God asked me to save, if God asked me to not spend. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's fine. Why? Because it's for his glory. That's so good. That, that's so good, Pastor. And, and you touched on another thing uh, that we can kind of segue to. Uh, and I appreciate your transparency and honesty here was you, you talked about some of the fears, because when we do talk about finances in church, you know, there's already that unsettling and you could probably hear the, 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 the changes in people's uh, posture at yep. church. Uh, but it wasn't even it was about you talked about the fear that people have when it comes to finances because of the changing surroundings, because of the economic times, because of the bills going up. And all of a sudden there's this unsettling and going back to a provision thing. God, God is not looking at the price. We are. And it makes sense. We want to be wise stewards. Have to. But God is not like, oh, shoot, I don't know if I could provide this month. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I think. Oh, oh, shoot, this is too high. I I don't know. Like. (laughs) It's easy for a believer to say God's my provider when we have a lot. That's so good. Right? Right. Look at what God has blessed me with. God is my provider. Look how much excess I have. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to say God is my provider when we don't have or when we're looking at what we used to have. Which to me almost says, was he ever your provider? Yeah, I mean, that's (laughs) that's definitely Or were you your provider and then you kind of let God kind of have some credit? You got on it to make it feel better. (laughs) Because, I mean, if you, right? Is that, is that, is that a weird thought? Because... If it's just in my excess, there's comfort Mm -hmm. and what I've saved and what my job allows because of my whatever. And then now when it's tight or it changes, now the comfort doesn't feel as it's not as comfortable. Right. Yeah. No, I think that that that's where God knows our hearts and he weighs our motives and that sort of a thing. And and so, you know, I, I, I know that there are probably people who when they've been blessed by God, have sincerely said, wow, look at God as my yes. provider. Yeah. This is amazing, right? Um, but we're fickle creatures, mm-hmm. right? Uh, one, one moment they were shouting Hosanna, the next moment they were shouting crucify him. Mm-hmm. And in, in many senses, there can be times where we're shouting God's my provider, and right. then the other times we're shouting God, where are you? Right. Um, you know, it's easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the disciples, you know, they, here they are experiencing the blessings yeah. of the feeding of the 5,000, and then when they're out on the sea in the storm, they're yeah. going, don't you care, or, you know, yeah. those types of things, and, and they're struggling. And so um, we, we're, we're no different. We're, mm-hmm. we're people. We're humans, yeah. you know. Uh, the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, here they are with miraculous provision, manna on the ground, and they're complaining about cucumbers and leeks, you right. know. Um, and it, it's like, gosh, you know, God is giving you the bread of angels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's sustaining you. You've had water from the rock. Yeah. Everywhere you've gone, you've seen the provision of God and, and even the quail that came in at night. Yeah. I just had quail for the first time by the other, the oh. other day. And? 
liked it. Really? Yeah. I Yamey? Never... Is it more chicken, turkey? Um, you know, it was a it was a tougher meat. Okay. It might have been the preparation. Yeah. Um, because I think they fire roasted it. Oh. Um, I, I had it at uh, a place over here that's a Mediterranean place. Okay. And so it came with some rice and you know the cucumber yeah. salad with type manna? thing. Yeah. Was it served? <laughs> yeah, a little manna on the side. <laughs> yeah. No, it was it was good. Okay. So I I wouldn't want to eat it until it came out of my nostrils like the children right. of Israel did, right. you know. So. But um, but yeah, no, it's good. Oh, that's cool. Well, <laughs> how, how how fickle we can be, but how yeah. Fickle. <laughs> um, well, Pastor Dan, in, in kind of a, a closing thought, uh, what what should we expect, or what um, might help prepare our hearts as we come into the next coming weeks, um, so that we can make sure that we're hearing from God and that we can yeah. uh, be attentive w- to what the Spirit is speaking. Well, you know. It, <sighs> I, I think when I contrast this part of the Your World series with the rest of the series, mm-hmm. I'm actually building thoughts mm-hmm. one upon the other. Right. Steps. And, you know, the Married series, you could listen to, I think we did, what, three parts on yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. You could listen to that in any order right. and still get all the information. Yeah. This one, I, I actually want people to listen to one, mm. two, yeah. three, and four, because there is a progressive revelation that starts when we realize that God is our provider. Mm -hmm. And when we lay the foundation that the purpose of our wealth is to build God's kingdom. Yeah. Then when we hit next week and the third week and the fourth week, it it actually crescendos into something beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where if you're listening to this podcast and you haven't listened to the message, please listen to the message. Yeah. And then get week two and then get week three and get week four because it's going to walk you down a path that step one is settled that God's my provider and that the purpose of my wealth is to right. build his kingdom. Right. Okay. Then next week we'll lay the next step, yeah. the next, you know, place that we're going to go to. Mm-hmm. And then the third week we'll build on that and it'll flow from week one and two. And then the fourth week yeah. will be that climax that brings us to the point where God wants us to be. Yeah. And when you get to that, oh my gosh, yeah. life explodes. Mm-hmm. It, it, I can't tell you the joys that yeah. happen when we do things God's way. And and if we settle these things and walk through these things, expect to be blessed. Mm-hmm. Expect to be joyous. Expect to have worry broken off your life. Yeah. You know, we talked about mammon. You yes. know, we talked yeah. about that that worry, that anxiety that comes with money mm-hmm. and wealth, right? That's yeah. a demonic stronghold that right. comes out of our lives. Think about being free of that care. How joyous, right? Yeah. When when you realize God's my provider. Mm-hmm. And money, you know, if God's my master, then money's yeah. my slave. That's right. an important thought. Right. Because if you're a slave to money, then your life is going to be a grind. Right. But if money is your slave, then you're you're going to have the resource and the wealth because God lays these principles for right. us right. to be able to establish his kingdom. And his kingdom is not a stingy kingdom. Right. His kingdom is not a lacking kingdom, right? Yep. Jesus said it's your God, Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Right. What, what resource isn't available to us in the kingdom of God? Yep. Right. A- anything that we need, we, we can call upon heaven and the resources of heaven are our covenant right. Amen. And that's not that we're bossing God around or no, that we're no, you know no. demanding uh, yeah. anything from God. But what we are doing is we're saying, hey, I, I do have a right to this because we're one. Right. Just like God has a right to everything that's ours. Yeah. And he can ask at any time and we're not offended, we're not hurt, and we're yeah. not going to hold anything back from him. In the same way, if we ask something of God, what's he going to hold back from mm-hmm. us? Right. If we ask him for bread, will he give us a stone? Yeah. If we ask him for fish, will he give us a snake? No, he's a good father who knows how to give good gifts to his children. We'll have everything we need and then some if we follow these principles Mm -hmm. and we we put God first in all these things because God is our provider. I mean, yeah, I I had a conversation with Pastor Jess. It was about a testimony, uh, a, a testimony of giving and generosity. And it was just like, oh, my gosh, it's so freeing. And, and when you said that, that you know, Brit, we, we celebrate when someone is free of addictions, whether yeah. alcohol, sure. tobacco. Uh, we celebrate when someone's delivered of maybe demonic oppression or spirit. These are, are, are things that we celebrate and we're excited for because you're free of the bondage of sin or, uh, again, addictions. In the same way, when someone gets free of the spirit of mammon, yeah, th- that should be celebrated because for on sure. the other side of that, you're. it's like... <laughs> the the shing- the shingles is that what it is they fall off your eyes you know like there's be- because you're no longer bound by what 
society or your own thoughts about what finances are to do. Yeah. And then when you hear a preacher or a church or anyone talk about finances or generosity, all of a sudden you're not, you know, because you're free of the, you're free of the fear that's yeah. attached to that. The reason why we do that is because, you know, you're meddling. Well, wh- what do you mean we're meddling? We're talking. Okay, we, we talked about this at, at the top end, Pastor Dan. But why would we t- why would we talk about finances? So you you guys shouldn't talk about finances. Stick to what the Bible says. You laid it out. <laughs> Right at the beginning, a yeah. third was it a third of the Quarter, gospel? Yeah, uh, the gospel. Uh, oh, every four s- verses in the New Testament, the Bible is talking about these things. Yeah, and so yes, in your World Series, we are going to talk about things that pertain to our world. And so I'm yeah. really looking forward to Pastor Dan. Any yeah, closing yeah. thoughts? Gosh, um, you know, just uh, I, I would encourage anybody who's struggling in this area. Like I said, listen to the message, but take some time and repent. Mm. You know, um, repentance is not a dirty word. It's a beautiful word. There's freedom that comes with that. And just take a moment to say, God, I'm so sorry that I have made money, things, my job, my provider. And then put God back in his right position. God, you're, you're my provider. I trust you. And I'm going to follow your principles for my life. And my goodness, that positions you so that next week when we start in, yep. you've got a fresh open heart to what God wants to do. And it positions you for the blessings to come into your life. Because if God sees the right heart and God sees you where you need to be, then my goodness, God won't withhold any good thing from those who mm-hmm. love him. You yeah. know, there's going to be good things that come into your life and it'll it'll free you. It will free yeah. you, you know. And anytime worry or fear comes, you rebuke it. You say, no, nope, not going to go there. You know, I'm just going to I'm just going to follow what God says for my life. And, and God is my provider. And keep reminding if you have to say that 50 times a day, God is yeah, my provider. Come on. Uh, you're, you're, you're speaking. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? Yeah. It's biblical. It's sound and it will be encouraging for you. So I just want to encourage our listeners, uh, you know, don't allow that fear, that worry, frustration, anxiety, any of that kind of stuff. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Present your request to God and the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds by Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dan. Thank you, listeners. Again, over the next few weeks, your questions, your feedback, spread the word. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.